All right, well, it's so great to have you join us for this devotional time. And uh, what we're gonna do is work through Romans 12. This is the first of three devotions where we'll be looking at this passage, but I'd just like to start by praying. So let's go ahead and talk to God together. Well, Jesus, I am just so thankful to you, to your character. God, you are so worthy of our lives. And God, would you, by your Holy Spirit, help us to interpret this passage that we would be able to see it with spiritual eyes and hear it with spiritual ears as only you can help us to do. So we thank you for that. We thank you for your love words in your Bible, in your precious name, amen. So we're gonna start with verse one, it's an obvious place to start, and verse two. So if you are wanting to follow along in your Bible, Romans 12, one and two. Therefore, I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now there's a word at the start of this verse that um, I've been taught often, maybe you have too, it's therefore. And so when we see that, we need to ask ourselves, what is that word therefore? And it's referencing back to something Paul has said prior, right? And actually it's referring to all 11 chapters that come before chapter 12 here in Romans. And in these 11 chapters, Paul has been clearly explaining all the wonderful mercies that we have in God through Jesus Christ. Like in chapter four, where it talks that we're justified by faith, that we have freedom from death, that if we know Jesus, we live forever, that we are now free from sin. We don't have to sin. We now have a choice in Jesus and what he accomplished on the cross gives us a choice. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit. God gives a part of his own nature to us and that allows us to walk out these things he's called us to do. We are sons and daughters of God. We're adopted in co-heirs of Christ and that God is going to fulfill his promises through the Old Testament, through Jesus. I mean, that's a lot of awesome mercies that God mentions here in the first 11 chapters. And Paul is saying, therefore, therefore I urge you, I plead with you, in light of all these amazing mercies, in light of all these awesome things that God provides us, our response is clear. There's only really one logical response, and that is to offer our bodies, offer our lives, to surrender to this awesome, loving God, and to lay down our script and pick up God's plan, His story for our lives. And that's what we see here in verse one, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. And what I find remarkable about this is that it says, offer your body. The, the offering is our part, it's our choice. And you know, God, as you know, in his mighty majesty, could certainly make us do whatever he wanted, but that he leaves it as our choice. And that's because our God wants a loving relationship with us. He wants us to choose because love requires choice. There is no love without choice. And then secondly, what is our second response? To not conform, but to be transformed. As it says in verse two, do not conform to the pattern of this world, or other translations say, be forced into its mold. And what is this world's mold? We're not talking about the world in, in light of nature. That's beautiful, that's what God's created. But instead, instead, the spirit of our age. And what is the spirit of our age? Well, it's the worship of the great Trinity, me, myself, and I. Right, we're about um, in and of to live, left to ourselves. We are all about ourselves. And another pastor was telling a story about how they uh, trap monkeys in some places. I don't know if it's good to trap monkeys, but one of the the things that they do is they drill a hole in a coconut and they put something that the monkey would like, like some banana or a treat in there. And so the monkey will put their hand in the coconut and grab that thing. But because their hand's in a fist, when they go to pull it back out of the coconut, they're stuck. And they just simply walk and put the net over the monkey because the monkey is spending all of its time and its energy getting that thing at once, satisfying what it wants. It can't, it can't figure out to let go of that thing to be free. 
it still just wants to hold on. And, and I find that can be true of myself too. When I'm not surrendered to God, when I think it's on me to make my life worthwhile or meaningful, I'm like that grabby monkey, right? And we see that through in our world, that people are grabbing and so desperately seeking to be satisfied, but they can't. They're just kind of trapped with their fists caught in a coconut, right? And it's totally opposite of God's way. God's character is not what he can get. It's what he can give. He, he's the one that laid down his life. He's the one that washes other people's feet. He's the one that's described in 1 Corinthians 13 as being patient and kind and he, not envying, not boasting, keeping no record of wrong. That's our God. So to break free of the world's mold, we need our minds renewed. And how do we do that? Well, we saturate ourselves with God's word. And that's more than the verse of the day. Not that that's bad. And it's more than hearing a sermon that someone else has prepared. And we need to do that. But for us to really truly have our minds renewed, we need to get into the words for ourselves and study it, meditate on it. We need to get in groups and talk about it with other people. That's why life groups and Valley Girls and men's ministry is so important because we are designed to grow on our own. And when we do these two things, when we surrender our lives and when we allow our minds to be renewed and that we allow God to do that transformative work in us, there's an incredible outcome. Did you catch it? It says, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good pleasing and perfect will. So when we have offered up our lives, surrendered to his script, and when we allow him to renew our minds, our desires are renewed to match his. And then we are able to walk, we cooperate in this perfect plan, this complete plan that God has. And we get to be a part of helping others see him. He is glorified. The spotlight is put on him. And when we walk in this way, others are rescued. Others are set free. To me, that is pretty awesome and cool. So what do you say? Let's do it. Let's surrender our lives. Let's allow God to renew our minds. Let me pray for us real quick, just to close. Well, Jesus, I just pray that the truth of what you're saying here, the promise that you're offering us, that when we lay down our lives to you, which is such an easy exchange, who would not surrender to such a loving, merciful God who has made all the way for us to be set free from the mold of this world, which is just trying to grab at things that will never satisfy. They actually make us more stuck. God, would you open our eyes to see how we can be free in you? And would you help us to stay fervent in your word, to stay available to you, that others could see you in and through us? Just thank you and praise you. Amen.